Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and today's video is a request by one of my Patreons. So this is basically a product visualizer. So what we have over here is just a regular camera that can look in any of the directions. It can be moved around by holding the mouse key, yes, but, the, but the key doesn't really matter. Uh, you can use any key you like. Also you can zoom in and zoom out and if you press keyboard key E you get attached to this actor and then you can rotate and look around it until you right click to get detached. So let's begin. For this what I'm going to actually do is create a new level. So I'm going to create just a regular default level. So there we go. We have a level and what we need in here is to click on the settings and click on the world settings so that they appear over here and we need to input a game mode. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use since this is a first uh, person template. I'm going to use that one but it's not that important. What is important that we need a character uh, like the actual pawn that we can control. So now let's create ourselves a pawn. So right click blueprint class. Let's create a character and I'm going to call this tutorial camera. And now we can change our default pawn class from in my case from the uh, camera player to the tutorial camera so that it would use this guy right here. So now if we press play uh, nothing happens. We are standing still and we can't really move around. So let's open up our tutorial camera and let's actually add an actual camera. So first what we need is a arm, so a spring arm and then in this one I want to add a camera and so for the camera what I want to do is make sure that I have checked the use pawn control rotation. Uh, this is very important so that we can look up and down. Then I'm going to select my spring arm, change the arm length to be zero and now as you can see my camera has been moved in. Now the issue is if we zoom in and zoom out the camera goes this way and that's not exactly what we want. So I'm going to tilt my spring arm a little bit. So I'm going to roll this in the pitch. So in the Y axis I'm going to do minus 45. So now if we change the arm length you can see it goes upwards. And I think that's way better for zooming in and zooming out. Now let's go back to the zero by default. Now let's set up some controls for this. So in the event graph let's remove all of this junk right here and first let's do the input axis look up and we also need the input axis turn. There we go. So we have both of those and let's start very simple. So from the top one let's do the add controller pitch input and connect the axis value to the value right here and then for the turn I'm going to do add the controller yov input and also connect the values together. Now if we would compile and play this we can now look around. We can look right and left and up and down. But that's just about all that we can do. So now let's make sure that we can actually move around in the game world itself. So uh, I'm gonna do a in my case mouse left button. So as long as we hold the mouse left button we will be able to actually move around in the world. And for that one we need a new variable which will identify us that we can move around and I'm gonna call this move camera location. So move camera lock and that's gonna be a boolean. So on the left mouse button pressed I'm going to make sure that this is set to true and once I release it I want it to go back to false. Now let's go back to our two controls over here. So let's start with the top one first and over here what I want to do is drag in our camera move location and we want to do a if branch check on this. Now on false route what we can do is run our add controller pitch input. But on true what I want to do is get our reference to ourselves. So self then from this one I want to get the actor location and then I also want to get the actor forward forward vector. There we go. And over here then from the uh, actor forward vector I want to multiply this with a float. So vector times float and for the float I'm going to use the input axis value. Then in our look up we want to do the get world location minus 
vector minus vector minus this newly created value from our actor forward vector. Then once we have this value, then again from the self-reference, so from this uh, actor, we want to set the actor location and then we can use this vector as the new location and this execution can be connected to true route right here. Now to make li my life a little bit easier and faster I'm gonna copy this whole whole thing except for the add pitch and the event node itself and I'm gonna copy those over here to this control right here. So let's copy this in Let's move our pitch, uh, our yov out of the way and connect it to false instead. Connect the execution together. So now again from the turn we are checking if we can move the camera. If we can't then we are simply uh, rotating our view around. But if we can then on true we can proceed with our set actor location. Now again for this float value let's use our input axis but instead of using the get forward vector we want to do the get actor uh, right vector so this will allow us to get a uh, location at any of the sides of our character instead of forwards or backwards so i will reconnect my pin from right here to over here so let's delete our forward vector and replace it with our right vector now but the difference is i think now with minus they should be mirrored so let's try this out so we can look around let's hold key and there we go yes i can move forwards and backwards correctly but right and left are the opposite way around for me so i will replace this minus with a plus so let's do vector plus vector and now this can be our new uh, location. So now if we try this again, if we look around, it's all good. Hold mouse left down and now yes, we can move back and forward. Now the last basic control for us that we should create is actually zooming in and out of the objects. And that is very, very simple. All we gotta do is look for our mouse wheel axis event. Uh, this is not the one, we need the event mouse axis event, so this one at the top, there we go, and from here what we want to do is let's drag in our spring arm, then we want to get the arm length, then we want to set the arm length, there we go, so actually that's going to be the only thing, we are only going to set this value, but we need to get it so that we can add or remove from, from the value. So now what I want to do is, by default the zooming is quite slow, so for the axis I'm going to do a multiplier, so I'm going to multiply float times float, and I will actually create a new variable for this, so let's call the zoom speed and let's make this into a float then if we compile we can set a value so I'm gonna set a value of 10 uh, because yeah like I said by default the zooming is quite slow so now for the arm length I want to do a plus so float plus float plus this value right here then we can connect it over here and this is all that we need so now if you are wondering why it's only plus, where is the minus, well we will receive an input from minus 1 up to 1, uh, so we're going to receive a positive or negative value and then it's going to do the math correctly uh, because of the plus minus sign. So now if we zoom in or out, you can see we are zooming in quite nicely, but yeah, in my case I feel like I want the controls to be the other way around. So what I will do is actually replace this with a minus. So let's do a float minus float. And now my wheel axes are going to work the other way around. So now, there we go. Yes, I like this better. If I scroll forwards, I go forward. If I scroll backwards, I go backwards. So I prefer this way instead of the other one. So there we go. Uh, our con camera controls are basically finished that's all that we needed to do for the camera itself uh, just these four events that we have right here but the last thing that we need to do is make sure that we can be attached to a specific actor so first let's create a new variable and let's call this is attached let's make this into a boolean value and now we need to do some checks 
uh, before we can actually allow to move around. So I want to be able to look around, but I don't want to be able to move around unless I'm detached from the actor. If I'm attached to the actor, I want to stay in that location. So from this true route right here, I'm going to do another if branch check and I'm going to check if is attached. And then I'm going to run my set actor location only on false routes. So we can copy the same thing from our lookup to our input turn. So let's do the same thing, connect the true and connect the false. Now, the next thing what we want to do is, uh, well, first let's create a option for us to be detached from, from the actor. So I'm going to do that on my mouse right button. And on pressed, I'm simply going to check if we are attached. So if we are attached, then I want to run a node called detach from actor. And then once I detach myself, I want to set my location roles to be keep world so that we would stay in the same exact location once we are detached. And once we are detached, I want to set my is attached boolean value back to false. Now let's actually create a functionality which will allow us to be attached to an actor. So I'm going to do mine on keyboard key E. So over here, what I want to do is do a line trace by channel. And just like in many other of my videos, I'm going to drag in the camera. I'm going to get its world location. And I'm also going to get the forward vector value. Now for the start position, we can use the uh, camera world location. But for the end position, I'm going to multiply my forward vector with an integer and I'm going to do like 1000 units so that the uh, line the line trace would be quite long and I'm going to add the world location to this uh, forward vector value right here and I'm going to use that as the end position. Now from the line trace on the return value I want to do a if branch check to see if we have hit something then we can break our hit result to get the data from the actor that uh, object that we have hit and what I would suggest is on the hit actor or it depends if you want to be attached to an actor or a component you want to check if any of these two I'm going to use an actor I'm going to check if it has a tag so actor has tag or component has tag and I'm going to give this uh, let's call this I'm going to call this something uh, you can probably figure out a better tag for yourselves then I want to do a if branch check to see if it actually has this specific tag and if it's true if it has that tag I want to do an attach actor to an actor and the parent actor is going to be this hit actor and the target is a reference to ourselves now once we have attached ourselves we want to set our is attached to be true now if you are using if you want to attach yourself to a component instead of the actor uh, instead of using attach actor to actor you want to use attach actor to component and also for this node you want to set all of your uh, rules to be snap to target so that our actor would snap to that location the last thing left for us to do is actually creating a actor with a tag named something so I'm just gonna copy the tag minimize this window let's create a new blueprint class let's create a regular actor and I'm gonna leave the name be new blueprint one and here I will just simply add let's add a cube let's select the self reference of this uh, actor and let's look for the tag and let's give this our tag now that we have done that we can compile and save this move in multiple of these objects so actually let me move these to zero so copy one copy two three four there we go press play boom we are over here so now we can move around zoom in and out press e and we are getting attached to these actors if we right click we are getting detached and everything is working just fine but now uh, we have 
we have some more possibilities for configurations because by default you can see if I try if I try to go inside of this object it does not really allow me to do so because the physics are enabled and it's it basically doesn't want to do so also if we would move uh, out of this map we are falling down from the map now there are options that we can do so first and foremost let's open up back our tutorial camera and we need to overlap everything for our capsule component because that is the main thing that is colliding with something by default its collision preset is set to be pawn we can simply overlap everything but by doing only this if we press play we immediately fall through the ground so we need to disable physics for this character so make sure you select your character movement uh, and on the right side at the very top first value right here in the movement is gravity scale if we set this from 1 to be 0 that means that the gravity does not exist for this character so we can basically walk off the edge and get back on top of the edge without any issues there we go and the last thing in this object right here for the cube you want to scroll down till you find the collisions and for the collisions I'm going to select a custom one because what I want to do is I want to ignore my camera I don't want the camera to be colliding with any of the objects that might come in the game world so now if we press play there we go you can see we are getting attached to this object press E on this one on this one we cannot move around we can only look around as of right now because we are attached but if we right click we have detached from the object so that's gonna be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to leave a like subscribe my youtube channel and I see you in the next video